This screencast will focus on Solus's integration with Oracle Golden Gate, showing you how Solus message routers can enhance and simplify data distribution. This screencast is the first in a group of screencasts looking at Oracle Golden Gate integration. It will answer the question of why to use Solus message routers with Oracle Golden Gate by showing you how Solus can enable real-time distribution to applications while simplifying and accelerating existing Oracle Golden Gate installations. Specifically, we'll look at two demonstrations highlighting aspects of Oracle Golden Gate integration. The first being the delivery of real-time database events to JMS consumers. Then, we'll demonstrate end-to-end -end database replication using Solus. And you can check out the related screencast titled Oracle Golden Gate Integration Achieving Higher WAN Performance for more details on accelerating Golden Gate over the wide area network. What makes the Golden Gate integration with Solus most interesting is all the opportunities it unlocks. Database to database transfer is still supported over Solus, but once the database events are on Solus message routers, they can be delivered to a whole new set of applications like complex events processors, data grids, or business intelligence applications. The flexibility of the Solus message routers lets you easily add or remove consumers without affecting the source systems, giving you a single distribution fabric for the whole enterprise with a detailed view that is always up to date. The Solus integration uses the Oracle Golden Gate application adapter for Java, which enables the delivery of database events to the Solus message broker via JMS. Let's trace a database event through the system. When a transaction is committed at the database, the event is handled by the Golden Gate capture extract and written to the Golden Gate trail file in the normal way. Then, instead of the data pump, the Golden Gate Java user exit, or Java UE, reads the trail file and delivers events to the JMS plugin handler. The JMS plugin handler will convert the event into a JMS message and send the message to the Solus message router. What's nice about the Oracle Golden Gate for Java product is that it supports JMS publishing out of the box and it has nice configuration flexibility to control how the messages are sent. For example, messages can be sent once per transaction or once per operation. The format of the message can be customized to be a JMS text message with XML or a JMS map message. This gives the application designers a lot of options without ever having to touch code. If that's not enough, then custom message formatters can be written using templates or simple Java code using a provided message format plugin API. If still more control is needed, then the Golden Gate for Java product provides an extension API that allows the full customization of the message sending. This allows applications to integrate with the Solus native Java API and customize every aspect of the message send. The configuration of the Golden Gate Java user exit is property-based and very flexible. The following is an example set of properties for sending the Golden Gate min XML format. The Solus message router connectivity is configured by specifying the JNDI connection factory, provider, and security credentials. Then the Java user exit uses a concept of event handlers for message delivery. Events are delivered to one or more handlers. In this example, the configuration shows a Golden Gate min XML event handler configured to connect to a Solus JMS connection factory and send persistent messages on a specified topic. The message mode is transacted, meaning that each JMS message will contain all of the operations of a Golden Gate transaction in a single message. So now let's look at an example JMS message that would be generated by the configuration we just saw. The JMS message will have all the standard JMS message properties such as delivery mode and destination. By default, the Golden Gate handler will also augment the JMS message with some relevant custom properties. These will give information related to the Golden Gate trail file. And finally, the actual database operations will be encoded in the payload. This example shows the min XML format provided by Golden Gate. This means the XML will have a root element indicating a transaction. It will then have one or more operational elements. Each operation element will have attributes that indicate the schema, table, operation type, date, and the position of the operation within the trail file. As a child to the operation element, there will be column elements as required by the operation with before and after values as appropriate. Let's now see a demonstration of the real-time event distribution to a JMS application. So what I've got set up over here is the command line access to the database and we will use the standard example Oracle table department which has departments of a fictitious company and their locations. I've already got an extract that is set up and listening for database events and when these occur it will write out a trail file. Then we need a Java user exit. The Java user exit configuration is very basic. It just loads up the Java user exit. 
the real configuration is in the properties file as outlined previously and you can see here that the configuration is correct for a Solus message router using JMS. So you can see I've already got the Java user exit up and running and if we switch over to the Solus message router you can see that the Java user exit client is already connected the JMS configuration is configured and matching here is the connection factory here are the topics and I also have an endpoint configured for the JMS consumer to receive messages and you can see nobody is bound to that queue currently to receive messages I have a sample JMS application that is very basic derived from the Solus introductory samples that will simply bind to a queue receive messages print the messages it receives and acknowledge these messages back to the Solus message router so let's start this consumer and he's now bound to the queue so now let's insert one record to our database and commit this record you can see it's now in the database and if we return to the application you can see it received notification of this insert you can see that the message JMS message properties came through you can see that the Golden Gate properties are available in the JMS message and you can see that the message contents here are formatted in MinXML including the operation type of insert the full details of each column including all of the data that was inputted so now if we just do something a little bit more complex we'll insert one more record and we'll update the previous record changing the department from test to R&D if we receive that you can see that the two rows are updated if we commit this we can see that the message arrives at our JMS publisher and contains now two operations inside of one transaction the first operation is an insert the second operation is an update and in the update as required it contains the before and after values allowing the application to fully validate and finally if we just delete the two records that we just added you can see we return to the original table the JMS message is received by the JMS consumer and you can see that it has again two operations and the primary keys for each of those operations the JMS Capture, sometimes called the VAM or Vendor Access Module, allows data that is published normally by the enterprise applications to be persisted in the database without the need for the application to perform a database update. In this way, the Solus Message Router can act like a shock absorber, decoupling the application from the database update. The database becomes just another subscriber on the enterprise message bus, which can be scaled independently to meet peak demand without impacting the application. How does this work? The JMS Capture reads the message from the JMS queue or topic endpoint and converts these messages into the Golden Gate message format, writing the resulting operation into the Golden Gate trail file. The operations are then replicated to the target database following the normal Golden Gate process. Similar to the Java user exit for sending messages, the JMS Capture is highly configurable and supports a variety of message formats which allows a lot of flexibility in how the system is set up. So let's now put the Java user exit and JMS capture together and look at how it can also achieve end-to-end -end replication. The goal of the example shown here is to replicate the source site database to the target site across the WAN. Using standard Golden Gate, you would configure a capture to send operations to the trail file. Then a pump would read from the trail file and send operations across the WAN to a collector process, which would write the target trail file. Finally, a replicate would read the contents of the trail file and inject the operations into the target database. So now, if you want to migrate to Solus, to enable the real-time distribution of events, you only need to change the pump and collector. As shown earlier, the Java user exit can send the operations into the Solus message router. The Solus message router can route the messages across the WAN and deliver them to the waiting JMS capture. The JMS capture will then be able to create the target trail file for replication to the target database. So let's quickly see a demonstration of end-to-end -end database replication over Solus. So again, we've got the same scenario as before where we have an Oracle database running on a source host. We have already got our Java user exit up and running that will send messages into the Solus message router. From the previous example, we are still have our JMS listening consumer that's going to receive messages. This listening consumer is bound to the queue Q slash events. And we've got a second queue, queue slash capture, and we'll use this queue to allow the Oracle Golden Gate for Java capture to
bind to this queue, receive messages, and create the destination trail file. On the destination host, we have another Oracle database, and currently both of the databases have the same view of the department table, and then we can add a record on the source database and watch it replicate over to the destination database. So let's now add our record. We'll add a record for HR in Boston, and then we can see that this will be replicated through. So now using our JMS consumer on the events queue, it has received this insert, and you can see here are the properties of the insert, which is exactly as expected. And you can see also there's now one message waiting in the capture queue. So now let's go look at the VAM or capture process on the destination host. So much like the Java user exit, the VAM or vendor access module allows for capture and is configured for using properties files. So similar to the Java UE, you need to configure the Solus libraries, you need to configure the connectivity for the Solus message router, and you need to configure the queue to connect to, and here we've configured the capture queue. And then you have to configure the match rules to match the contents of the message that it is receiving. And here I have done so to match the min.xml format. So now, so if we just start our JMS fam, then we can see that it will now start up and bind to the queue and consume the message. And if we come over here, we can see that now the record is inserted into our destination database. So there is end-to-end -end replication using Solus Message Router to transmit the JMS messages from the Java UE to the JMS Capture and into the destination database. Having seen how real-time events are delivered and how end-to-end -end database replication can still be achieved, let's now look at some of the benefits of using Solus with Oracle Golden Gate. In large organizations with many sites, often the multi-master peer-to-peer architecture can get quite complex, as shown here. Adding Solus message routers can greatly simplify the interconnectivity, as topic routing handles the message distribution correctly without the complex configuration overhead. Similarly, in database fanout scenarios, adding Solus message routers allows the infrastructure to be consolidated and WAN usage to be optimized. It also gives you rich monitoring and statistics, providing you with increased visibility and control of the data transfer itself. So to conclude, hopefully this screencast helped demonstrate how easy it can be to use Solus message routers to enhance Oracle Golden Gate. Why add Solus? As outlined in this group of screencasts, enabling real-time event distribution for applications can unlock a variety of very compelling new ways to consume the data streams. And in addition, the system will still support end-to-end -end replication with improved architectural simplicity and higher WAN replication performance. Thank you for watching this video. You can find out more information about the Solus messaging products through this link.